Hello everyone, a very big welcome. I'm Alison and we're coming to you live from our brand new, new look Wildlife Photographer of the Year exhibition. Wildlife Photographer of the Year is the Natural History Museum's annual showcase of the world's best nature photography and wildlife photojournalism. This year saw entries from photographers of all ages and experience levels and from 93 different countries. Our panel of judges have whittled down from thousands of entries, just 100 winners. And these form our exhibition, which I am really excited to be able to give you a sneak peek of today. These images shine a spotlight on the beauty of our natural world, but they also encourage us to think about some of the big conservation issues that are facing us today. Because behind every one of these fantastic images, there is a story. And there's also a passionate photographer telling that story. So today, I wanted to introduce you to some of our award-winning photographers from this year's competition and chat to one of our judges to get their insight into the competition. And I wanted to start by introducing you to our Rising Star Award winner. Now, the competition is always uh, in, keen to encourage young wildlife photographers, up and coming photographers. So our portfolio award is for a portfolio of images from a photographer aged 18 to 26. And this year's winner is Matthias Pieschak. He's here with us today by his stunning portfolio, which we can take a look at. Matthias, thank you so much for joining us. How does it feel? How are you feeling right now? I'm so excited. I'm like in the mood, so I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, we're, we're by your fantastic portfolio of images here. I have struggled to pick a favourite, but I know you have a couple of favourites. So um, just describe these images for us and, and tell us about your favourites. Yeah, so I, I photograph mostly birds, but instead of chasing rare species, I discovered that I prefer to focus on the common subjects, like mute swans and even common pigeons. Like, I think every, animal, every bird is beautiful. You just need to spend some time with it and just take this beauty out. So, yeah, so my, my, my focus in this portfolio was to showcase animals that live near my home in Poland, uh, but show them in an interesting way and to show some of the behaviors. So, for example, like this black-headed gull, I really like the, the, the moment when it just hit the water and created this nice splash of, of droplets. And I remember when I was starting with my photography, which was like more than 10 years ago, I was just playing with, with the, the droplets in my aquarium, trying to get the same result. And, and now after all these years, uh, after all these years, the, the nature did it f for me. So <laughs> that was a really, really nice uh, experience. Um, also like really, really common mute swans, everyone, everyone saw them, like they're everywhere. So my goal was to photograph this species, but in an interesting way. So I've come up with an idea, like to just lay on the ice on my back and got my, ha got my camera in this position and just wait as the curious swans will like gather all around me. And I thought that may be a good composition for a nice shot. So, so after 15 minutes laying on the freezing cold ice, it was like minus 10 that day, uh, I was surrounded with, by swans. And I was in two moods. One was, I was really happy because I was in the dream situation. I could take many, many nice photos. But the second one was, I was terrified because, because of all those swans wanting to like bite my head and trying to take my hat. So yeah, but at the end I got my photo, which I'm happy of. Um, so yeah, you can see all the, all the common species, but portrayed in an interesting way. That is what I love about your, your portfolio, is that it is, it's those, those common species that we might necessarily take for granted, but just shown in such a beautiful light. Where does your, your passion for nature come from? So I started at a really young age. I used to spend every free moment in nature, watching birds, watching different animals in parks outside my home. and. You know, I, I had to touch everything, just to, just to feel it, just to see what was going on there. So my passion for nature was years before my passion for photography. And I think this is really important for me because I, I got to know every, every bird species that lives in Poland. I can recognize them by, by their sounds, 
by the you know shapes of their uh, wings at flight. Mm -hmm. So that really helps me because I can predict the behavior and I can be just this one moment uh, before the action. So this really helps me to prepare for my photographs. Absolutely, that knowing your subject that can be so, so crucial to getting that, that brilliant shot. Now, this is not your first time in the competition, is it? Because you were actually been, uh, you've been awarded twice in the past as, as a young photographer in 2011, I think, and 2013. Yeah. So how did um, winning young photographer impact you at the time? Yeah, so firstly, it's, it's so good to be back here after 10 years. Um, when I just when I was starting in 2010, that was the first competition I've sent photos to, and I couldn't speak English back then. And it was funny because I got an email from the Nature History Museum that I won, and I thought this is a spam email, so I deleted it, and I didn't tell anyone about that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, okay, it's nothing. But then, like two months later, I got an, another email, and I was like, oh, maybe that's not spam. Let's show this to my parents, and they were like oh yeah, that sounds legit, and let's reply. So <laughs> we replied, and yeah, we end up in, in London uh, in October. So that was a really shocking experience for me, but it like opened the doors in, in many ways because uh, mostly it gave me the confidence that my photographs are like uh, interesting to other people and that laying in the mud for eight hours straight uh, for weeks, even months, is worth it, this, this one shot that I can tell the story through that shot and you know, to make people aware of uh, the nature and how important is it to, to protect it. So yeah, that really helped me and gave me the confidence to c consume and proceed with my passion. So you definitely recommend young photographers to, to enter the competition because it it's, it's free for young people to enter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah sure, y you never know. So uh, the, the photo I have submitted 10 years ago was my least favorite one to, to win. And so even if you don't feel like you have a nice shot, just give it a try. It doesn't cost you anything and it can change your world. Absolutely. And do you have any top tips for any young photographers that might be watching today? Yeah, so uh, I think that the main goal in nature photography is not to scare animals, to be invisible in the environment. So rather than chasing animals, it's better to sit in one place, to hide and sit in silence for like hours, but then you will discover that the animals come to you and, uh, in, and behave in a nature way, which is really what, what we want to, to, to get, yeah? to, to get this, the nice behavior of undisturbed wildlife. So that's, I, I would say that's the main tip, but also the, the, the perspective is really important, like, like here, I was all in the water, holding my lens just a few centimeters above the water level. And that really created this nice blurry foreground and, and blurry background. So I think perspective is, is really important. I often try to photograph on the eye level of the bird. And also light. This is one of the main like subjects in, in photography. So I always photograph at golden hours or even before that, so before the sunrise or after sunset. That's fantastic advice. And thank you for, for, for chatting to us today. Uh, and a massive, again, congratulations for your win. Um, but what I want to do is uh, head over to chat to another of our winners now. Morgan Heim is a wildlife photojournalist and filmmaker, and she has two images awarded in this year's competition. Um, so Morgan is just over here. We're going to have a look at just one of her winning images, which is fantastic. Morgan, congratulations and, and welcome. It's great to have you. Uh, we've got one of your images here for animals in their environment. Tell us about this image. What are we looking at. This little guy is a Columbia Basin pygmy rabbit of which there's only about 150 to 200 left on earth and uh, there's a, he's sniffing out a little stink beetle who's sharing his burrow um, and I love this picture because it is a moment of pure curiosity uh, between two species which I feel like you don't get to see that often um, and this is you know this is an animal that is super endangered from habitat loss and uh, fires and disease and in one of the most endangered types of ecosystems on the planet, the sagebrush environment. 
And I, you know, when you look at sagebrush, it's often looks all brambly, it looks all the same. But when you dive down underneath, there's all this diversity and these secret worlds playing out. Um, for me, one of the things that's really special about this picture is that it represents the product of decades of dedicated hard work and sacrifice by biologists such as John Galley at Fish and Wildlife in Washington and the Nature Conservancy. And in particular, this parcel of habitat still exists because of a single man named Peter Lancaster who uh, donated this land to the Nature Conservancy. And it's a teeny tiny pocket that's left where these animals can still survive and thrive. Um, so it represents hope to me. And I hope, you know, having a platform like this that can get that out to more people and maybe encourage more people to do things like this, uh, you, there's amazing the things that you can save. For sure, absolutely. And it's a beautiful image. It's a, a lovely insight into, into a part of an ecosystem. Um, I can imagine it's quite challenging. How did you manage to get this shot? So uh, I got this shot thanks to a remarkable technology called a camera trap. Um, yeah, it's a camera that the animal triggers by itself uh, because of a kind of invisible sensor. And in this case, I also used several flashes to help kind of illuminate that dark understory. And then you just leave it out there and see what happens. And you learn things like animal tracking, get scientists to help you know where to put things, and hopefully get lucky. And in this case, these rabbits were very happy to oblige. Absolutely. It's, it's a stunning image and, and a very well-deserved um, award. Um, you have another image in our competition, in our wetlands category, and, and both of your images have very strong conservation messages. Um, so I wondered, how do you go about telling a compelling conservation story with just one image? Yeah. It's, a, it's a, a really big question to kind of wrap your head around, and there's many ways to do it, but... For me, I'm always asking, what's the context of this species or this ecosystem? What are they dealing with? And then you start learning about and thinking about what does that look like? What drives it? And you really let the issue, I think, drive your imagination of what that could look like. And you start trying to figure out how do those things come together in a single moment? Or how can those things inform your caption? So it's, it's more than this animal doing that, you, you give it a little extra context. But it's, it's really about doing research and spending time and using your imagination and, and then seeing if, if all of those elements can come together in a single moment. And you gotta just try and try and fail again and try some more and eventually you start to get ones that you think work. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and it shows with, the, with two, two entries in this year's, this year's competition, both wonderful images. I, I would urge, urge our viewers to take a look at those when they can. Um, thank you so much, Morgan, and again, congratulations. But what I want to do is give a, a final uh, word to our chair of judges, because one question we get every single year is what makes a winning image? And we all want to be a fly on the wall in that, uh, in that judging room. So uh, the best person to answer that question for us is our chair of judges, Rosamond Kidman Cox, who is with us here today. Uh, Ros, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm, I'm going to throw this question at you that I know you get every single time. But what is it that makes a winning image? What are the judges really looking for? Well, I think the two words fresh and original sum it up in one sense. And that doesn't have to be something exotic that you've never seen before. But it can be sometimes. And I think Matthias and um, Morgan both illustrated that you can... Um, you can both tell a story in a very, I think, very wonderful way, which is what she's done with art and um, inspiration and research. But and it can be something that we are very familiar with, but never seen it in that way. But I think all those photos we've just seen, they stay with you. You come back and look at them and you like them again and again. And in the judging room, that's incredibly important because we see them over and over. And those have, let's say, heart and soul, which I think Morgan's does. It's absolutely delightful. Um, but also move you in some way and keep doing that. That's the secret. Absolutely. So some, some top tips there. You're thinking of entering. <laughs> now, Ros, you've been with the competition for, for four decades now. Um, are there any particular standout moments or themes from this year for you? 
Well, I think this year, and I can say that with a bit of authority, I think this is one of the best collections ever, um, partly because of the diversity of styles and subjects and their surprises um, um, throughout. You just get surprised every time you go around. Um, and I suppose, I, actually, what I love as well is that we have some of our previous young winners coming up through the ranks and reappearing. Um, Matthias isn't the only one, and for me, that's very special. It means that the competition has achieved one of its aims, which is to create a showcase to um, show the best photography and encourage new photographers and actually raise the status of photography of nature up into a, an art form. Absolutely. And I just wanted to share a comment that we had from one of our viewers that's watching online at the moment uh, saying incredible photos or congratulations. So thank you for that comment. And yeah, I would echo that. Congratulations to all of our winners. Absolutely fantastic. Just one uh, final uh, question for you, um, Ros. Um, you have shaped the, the, the competition for the last sort of four decades. You've played such an important role. Why is WPY important, do you think? Why is it important to you? Well, I think it's achieved some of its aims. Um, and really, it is showing how important pictures can be in um, transmitting stories. And really, this competition is so international. I don't think there is another competition that has the reach that this one does. So that not only endorses you know, for the photographers and gives them um, a lift and encourages them, but it also spreads their stories. And I think most of them will say to them, that's really important throughout the world. And I hope it goes on to actually reach parts of the world that it isn't reaching at the moment. Um, and I think it will, it's already shown signs of that. And in this exhibition, um, that I counted up, there are 31 different nationalities represented. Is it time to say one more thing? And I think what was heartening this year was that there were so many photographers from countries that don't often get represented here. Um, for example, in South and Central America, taking pictures in their own country rather than some Westerners or Americans going to their country. And that was very new this year. Fantastic. Well, Ros, thank you so much for your insights today, for joining us. And I, I agree wholeheartedly with absolutely everything that you've said. It's a fantastic comp competition. Um, it's a, it, the images today are that we've looked at, just a snapshot. There are many, many more. They are all absolutely wonderful. They all have incredible stories as well. So I want to say a very big thank you to all of our, our guest speakers for today. Um, and I want to thank you, our audience, for joining us. Now, remember, the Wildlife Photographer of the Year uh, uh, exhibition actually opens this week on Friday the 14th. You can book tickets online, so do check out our website. We also uh, have a, a website, a, a web gallery of our images as well, if you can't make it down to London, so check that out as well. And I should say that the competition, the entries for next year's competition actually open on the 17th of October. So I would urge any budding photographers out there, get your entries in. You never know, you might see your image here up on the wall. Thank you again for joining us. We'll be bringing you more insights from Wildlife Photographer of the Year over the coming months, so keep an eye out on our social media channels. Remember to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest from Wildlife Photographer of the Year. But I will say goodbye to you all for now, and we hope